Hi, Daim. How are you doing? Doing very well. Doing very well. Well, uh, I met you for the first time in this tournament and uh, I got to know that you are the founder of ChessDrum.net. So could you tell us something about Chess Drum and how it came into being? Well, the ChessDrum.net is uh, an idea that I had because I was asked a question about players of African descent and in terms of masters, titled players. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, I didn't have an answer, but that question was burning in my mind, and I thought I would research it and find out. Um, that led to me to be, do some initial research, and then the idea of doing a magazine uh, came up. I actually wrote a marketing plan for my, um, one of my classes during my MBA about uh, this idea that I had, but during grad school, I had no time, and so once uh, I finished my doctorate and went off to work, the internet started to blossom and then I decided to make it into a website. Uh, and the idea primarily uh, is to highlight the accomplishments of players of African descent uh, in, the, in the diaspora, uh, wherever they may be around the world. Uh, and the reasoning was that there was very little exposure given to this segment and I think we need to reinforce the fact that chess is universal and that, that is really the only way that we're going to popularize the game and attract more sponsors if they see that it's universal as opposed to just a, a niche of people. So, so you live in the U.S. but uh, ChessDrum.net covers exclusively African players or also players from other continents? So I cover, there, there are two components. With the chess drum, it highlights the accomplishments of players of African descent, but it also covers international events. Uh, this is my sixth Olympiad. I've covered U.S. championships. I've covered um, other major tournaments. Uh, I cover the Tata Steel uh, from a distance, but I feature these tournaments on the chess drum because I believe that if I can expose the world to players of African descent, I can also expose players of African descent to international news. So I actually cover both ends in that way. Uh, the site takes on a different quality as opposed to just focusing on one uh, segment. But, but the, the main focus is to give a platform to those players who may not get it otherwise. So many times people complain that, you know, we don't get exposure and there's not enough way to popularize chess. Uh, you saw the problem and you just took it up to yourself and created the website on your own. Yeah, no, nothing else. You didn't want someone else to help you or you didn't go to some organization. Everything was done by you yourself. Well, initially when I was doing research, I had asked some officials in the, at that time, the USCF, if um, they knew anything uh, or had any information that would help me and they they didn't know really the answer to that uh, but yeah this is i have done this for 17 years and it's just me uh, i don't get any revenues or any grants uh, this is just my contribution i consider this my contribution to chess and why uh, are you contributing so much to chess uh, how are, how do you how are you attached to this sport well, I played, you know, I've been playing um, since I was a, you know, my early teens, which is actually late, but uh, it's been a passion of mine, but I did not realize that I have to express my passion in other ways. And this is needed more so than me playing chess. Uh, me being able to document history and uh, being able to give players a platform where they would not normally get a platform uh, it gives me a sense of pride. Uh, I shared with you a, a book um, that I did on Emory Tate. Yes, could you please uh, show us this the book? Um, uh, International Master Emory Tate, uh, a book I wrote in 2017. Uh -huh. uh, he actually passed away a couple of years uh, prior to that at a chess tournament. He was playing in the chess tournament and he uh, didn't feel well, went to the bathroom and came out. and told someone to call 911 and he collapsed and passed away at the chess tournament. But um, uh, I, I was able to capture his life because he had so much passion and I was able to express his passion through the chess drum and he would sometimes send me games and articles and sometimes he would tell me about games and he would say, hey, don't publish this. 
because it's like top secret or something. But um, yeah, I, I just, I think uh, it's, it's an important uh, service that we have to show the world that chess is universal and it's just not limited to a small niche of elite people or you have to have a 180 IQ in order to learn how to play. No, it's, it's universal. We have here, for example, we have 47 African countries uh, who are represented here at the Olympiad. There are only 54 African countries you know, on the continent. So we have almost, um, you, you can say a good 80% of the countries are, are here, which is, which is good. That's a cause for celebration. Uh, I appreciate the growth uh, of India and what you have also done uh, with Chess Space India. Uh, all of these grandmasters are, are really inspiring the world, uh, and what you're doing is, uh, is invaluable. And Thank so you so much for that, that. those kind words. Uh, what really uh, catches my attention is that even this book, like, uh, like the triple X clam which you, which you have just uh, shared with the, with the viewers here, mm -hmm. is uh, actually you also did it completely on your own. Uh, like, uh, what was the motivation behind covering Emery Tate, like you, you said he was your friend? And uh, also, please show us some of the pages because I, I really liked uh, the, the quality of everything in it. Well, this is a hardback book with um, the weight. I don't know what the weight of this paper is. It might be 70 weight, but um, I wanted to make it a class uh, work, um, kind Grand of a... master slayer. <laughs> I wanted to make uh, this uh, a keepsake, a memoir. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have all... I have. Um, 35 of his games, they're all annotated. And the, there are three that are annotated. Now, obviously, he did not uh, annotate it posthumously, but uh, I had received annotations from him personally. Uh, this, this was transcribed from a video he did against Verugia Nicobi, and this was the US championship when he uh, beat Verugia in the first round. And so I transcribed that. Uh, but this is, um, this is only a small piece of what uh, he meant, mm -hmm. particularly in American chess, because he, he had so much passion. Um, and he wanted to show the art, um, the artistic um, expression. Uh, and he, he did it in rather, sometimes rather reckless ways. But when he created something that was beautiful, he would want to show everybody. Not to say, okay, look at me, look at Emory, I've just crushed a grandmaster with this brilliant, you know, sacrifice. No, he was saying, look at, look at chess. Look, look at what chess, how beautiful chess is. And when you were around Emory, you knew that. You knew he was, he was really expressing the ultimate. He also was a poet. He wrote poetry as well. So he was very expressive, charismatic. He was very, very dramatic. Uh, but he also had his um, flaws as well, uh, and some of those um, you will read about in the uh, in the book as well. But you are not a publisher; you are like a you're a professor, right? By I'm professor. a professor. I teach um, in a global business at uh, Florida A and M University. Um, I had start a, I started a publishing company uh, for this book, wow. and that that gives the whole purpose structure. And then you have. If you're selling books, then there are, there are the tax issues you have to deal with. So it's a lot easier doing that if you have an organization, if you have a company. Uh, and then it just, um, you know, for this trip, for example, uh, this is a business expense because it's, I'm traveling, um, you know, for the Olympiad. So it's easier when you, when you have an organization and you can, uh, in America, you have all these uh, different tax uh, breaks. Sure and writing off expenses for, for these types of trips. So I am, I am a publisher in that regard, uh, and also the regard that I've, I've written a few thousand articles uh, for the chess drum, and I've done many interviews, including maybe five or six uh, players of the Indian, Indian national team. Uh, and it's, it's a joy to me. It's, again, it's my contribution, so that's how I look at it. And I don't really expect anything for it, but uh, it's a contribution to chess. So 17 years of work, uh, you have not really made some kind of a revenue model from chess uh, and you're going on and on. Where do you see this going in the future? 
Well, I need to do something to, for in terms of the information I have, I have a, about 20,000 pages on that website. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's about 20,000. And I need to find a way to take that content and move it into different formats. Now I'm working uh, right now. I'm working on a second, another book. Uh -huh. What is that? Uh, a more comprehensive uh, history book dealing with the African diaspora in chess. Um, that's going to be a gargantuan task because we're talking about you know globally, and so that that's um, where I see it going. M maybe doing more publishing uh, and also uh, maybe doing some the reformulation of the website and also putting it in different uh, formats, video formats, maybe going over some games. Uh, as you see, it's popular in YouTube now that people just take a game and they go over it and they annotate it and those are very entertaining. So uh, that's where I see it going. I see more permanency, writing books, uh, also doing some uh, audiovisual, media, a multimedia type of um, platform where uh, people can gain access to the information. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Daim, and uh, meeting you, I realized that people can achieve anything that they're set, set their eyes upon, and uh, you have been sort of an inspiration to the entire chess community, so please continue doing the work that you are doing. Well, I appreciate it, and also keep up the good work with Chess Space India. Thank you.